The Flettner FL-282 Colibri, often referred to as the Hummingbird, is a remarkable example of early aviation engineering, representing a pioneering step in the development of rotary wing aircraft. As one of the first helicopters to be used operationally in warfare, the FL-282 played a significant role in shaping military aviation history. Developed by Germany during World War II, the Colibri was primarily designed for reconnaissance and artillery spotting, but its innovative design and versatile capabilities made it a fascinating subject in the evolution of helicopter technology. This comprehensive exploration of the FL-282 will delve into its development, design, operational use, and its legacy in the history of aviation. Development and Historical Context the Early Years of Rotary Wing Aircraft The development of the FL-282 Colibri must be understood within the broader context of rotary wing aircraft evolution. The concept of vertical flight had intrigued inventors and engineers for centuries, with Leonardo da Vinci's sketches of an aerial screw in the 15th century being one of the earliest representations of this idea. However, it wasn't until the early 20th century that the technology to create functional helicopters began to emerge. The first successful helicopter flights were achieved in the late 1930s, with significant contributions from engineers in several countries. In Germany, the aviation industry was particularly active, driven by the nation's desire to reassert itself as a technological leader after the restrictions imposed by the Treaty of Versailles following World War I. It was in this environment that Anton Flettner, an innovative German engineer, made his mark on the history of aviation. Anton Flettner, the visionary behind the FL-282 Anton Flettner was an engineer with a background in shipbuilding, where he had made significant contributions including the development of the Flettner rotor, a type of rotating cylinder that could be used to propel ships using the Magnus effect. His interest in rotary wing aircraft led him to shift his focus from maritime technology to aviation. Flettner's initial foray into helicopter design resulted in the FL-265, which utilized a twin intermeshing rotor configuration. This design was innovative because it eliminated the need for a tail rotor a common feature in many other helicopter designs, by using two counter-rotating rotors that intermeshed. This configuration allowed the aircraft to remain stable without the torque effect that typically required a tail rotor to counterbalance. Building on the success of the FL-265, Flettner began developing a more advanced helicopter, the FL-282 Colibri. The project received backing from the German government which recognized the potential military applications of rotary wing aircraft, particularly for reconnaissance and artillery spotting. Design and Technical Specifications The Intermeshing Rotor System One of the most distinctive features of the FL-282 was its intermeshing rotor system, also known as a synchropter. This system consisted of two main rotors mounted side by side on a pair of masts, with the blades intermeshing at an angle to avoid collision. This design allowed the FL-282 to forego the need for a tail rotor, reducing mechanical complexity and improving the aircraft's efficiency. The intermeshing rotor system provided the Colibri with several advantages. It offered excellent stability, which was crucial for tasks such as reconnaissance and artillery spotting, where steady hovering was often required. Additionally, the design allowed for a compact airframe, which made the helicopter more maneuverable and easier to transport than other contemporary designs. Airframe and Construction The FL-282 featured a relatively simple and lightweight airframe, primarily constructed from steel tubing with fabric covering. This design was typical of early helicopters, where weight savings were essential to compensate for the limited power available from contemporary engines. The helicopter's fuselage was streamlined to reduce drag, with an open cockpit that provided the pilot with excellent visibility, an essential feature for reconnaissance missions. The Colibri's landing gear consisted of fixed tricycle-type skids, 
which provided a stable base for landing on rough terrain, an important feature given the helicopter's intended operational environments. Power Plant and Performance The FL-282 was powered by a single Bramo SH-14A radial engine, a seven-cylinder air-cooled engine capable of producing 160 horsepower. This engine was relatively modest by later helicopter standards, but it was sufficient to give the FL-282 a top speed of around 150 km per hour, 93 miles per hour, and a service ceiling of approximately 3,500 meters, 11,500 feet. The helicopter had a range of about 220 kilometers, 137 miles, which was adequate for its reconnaissance and artillery spotting roles. The Colibri's endurance was approximately 2 hours and 30 minutes, allowing it to carry out extended missions without the need for frequent refueling. Payload and Armament The FL-282 was primarily designed for reconnaissance and artillery spotting, so it was not heavily armed. However, some variants were equipped with light armament for self-defense, including a single 7.92mm MG-34 machine gun. The helicopter could also carry small payloads, such as grenades or other light munitions, but its primary role was to provide intelligence and coordinate artillery fire rather than engage in direct combat. Operational Use Deployment in the Kriegsmarine the FL-282 Colibri was primarily used by the Kriegsmarine, the German Navy, during World War II. The helicopter was deployed for a variety of roles, including reconnaissance, artillery spotting, and anti-submarine warfare. Its ability to take off and land vertically made it particularly valuable for naval operations, where space was often limited. One of the key operational uses of the FL-282 was as a reconnaissance aircraft for the German U-boat fleet. The helicopter's ability to hover and fly at low altitudes allowed it to spot enemy ships and convoys more effectively than traditional fixed-wing aircraft. This information could then be relayed back to U-boats or surface ships, allowing them to plan attacks more effectively. The Colibri was also used for artillery spotting where it would fly over enemy positions and relay information about the accuracy of artillery fire. This role was particularly important on the Eastern Front, where the vast and often featureless terrain made it difficult for ground-based observers to accurately direct artillery fire. Use in the Mediterranean and Aegean Seas The FL-282 saw operational use in the Mediterranean and Aegean Seas, where it was deployed from ships to conduct reconnaissance and anti-submarine patrols. The helicopter's ability to operate from small and confined spaces made it well-suited for these missions, particularly in the narrow and crowded waters of the Aegean. One of the most notable deployments of the FL-282 was aboard the German cruiser Köln, where it was used to scout for enemy ships and submarines. The helicopter's ability to quickly take off and land on the cruiser's deck made it an invaluable asset for naval operations in these regions. Challenges and Limitations Despite its innovative design and successful operational deployment, the FL-282 Colibri faced several challenges and limitations. One of the main issues was its relatively low production numbers. Due to the demands of the war and the focus on other military priorities, only around 24 FL-282 helicopters were built during the conflict. This limited the impact the Colibri could have on the overall war effort. Additionally, the helicopter's light construction made it vulnerable to enemy fire. While it was an excellent reconnaissance platform, it was not well suited to direct combat or operations in heavily contested areas. The open cockpit also exposed the pilot to small arms fire and the elements, further limiting the helicopter's operational flexibility. Variants and Experimental Models FL-282A1, the initial production model. The FL-282A1 was the first production variant of the Colibri. This model was designed primarily for shipboard operations, 
with modifications to allow it to take off and land on the limited space available on naval vessels. The A-1 variant featured a single open cockpit and was used primarily for reconnaissance and artillery spotting. FL-282B-1, the two-seat variant. The FL-282B-1 was a two-seat version of the Colibri, designed to accommodate a pilot and an observer or radio operator. This variant was intended to enhance the helicopter's reconnaissance capabilities by allowing the observer to focus on gathering intelligence while the pilot concentrated on flying the aircraft. The B-1 variant also featured minor improvements in terms of range and endurance, although these were limited by the helicopter's overall design. Experimental and Proposed Variants Several experimental variants of the FL-282 were proposed, although few were built due to the constraints of wartime production. These included versions with enclosed cockpits, increased armament, and more powerful engines. There were also proposals to develop a variant capable of carrying torpedoes for anti-submarine warfare, although this concept never reached production. The End of the War and Post-War Legacy Capture and Evaluation by Allied Forces As the war drew to a close and Germany faced defeat, many FL-282 helicopters were either destroyed or captured by Allied forces. The Allies, particularly the United States and the Soviet Union, were keenly interested in the Colibri and other German rotary wing aircraft, recognizing their potential for post-war aviation development. Several FL-282s were shipped to the United States and the Soviet Union for evaluation. These helicopters were studied in detail, with engineers examining their design and performance characteristics. The insights gained from these evaluations would go on to influence the development of early post-war helicopters in both countries. Influence on Post-War Helicopter Development The FL-282 Colibri, along with other German helicopter designs such as the Fock Achilles FA-223, had a significant impact on post-war helicopter development. The intermeshing rotor system, in particular, was a key area of interest and it influenced the design of later helicopters in both the United States and the Soviet Union. In the United States, companies such as Sikorsky and Bell used knowledge gained from the FL-282 and other captured helicopters to advance their own designs. The success of the Sikorsky R-4, the world's first mass-produced helicopter, owed much to the lessons learned from German rotary wing aircraft. In the Soviet Union, the captured FL-282s were used to advance the development of the Yakovlev and Kamov helicopter programs. Kamov, in particular, adopted the coaxial rotor system for which it would later become famous, drawing inspiration from the intermeshing rotor designs of the FL-282. The FL-282's place in aviation history the Flettner FL-282 Colibri occupies a unique place in aviation history as one of the first helicopters to be used operationally in warfare. Although its production numbers were limited and it did not have a decisive impact on the outcome of World War II, the Colibri's innovative design and successful deployment demonstrated the potential of rotary wing aircraft for military use. The FL-282's legacy can be seen in the subsequent development of military helicopters, which have become an indispensable part of modern armed forces around the world. The helicopter's ability to perform vertical takeoffs and landings, hover in place, and operate from confined spaces has made it an invaluable asset for a wide range of military operations, from reconnaissance and logistics to search and rescue and close air support. Technical Analysis and Legacy Technical Innovations The FL-282 Colibri was a technologically advanced aircraft for its time, incorporating several innovations that would influence future helicopter design. The intermeshing rotor system, in particular, was a significant advancement in rotary wing technology. By eliminating the need for a tail rotor, the intermeshing rotors reduced mechanical complexity and improved the helicopter's overall stability and maneuverability. 
Another notable feature of the FL282 was its relatively compact and lightweight design. This made the helicopter more agile and easier to transport, which was a crucial factor for its intended roles in reconnaissance and naval operations. The open cockpit, while a limitation in some respects, provided excellent visibility for the pilot, enhancing the helicopter's effectiveness in its reconnaissance role. The FL-282 in comparison with contemporary helicopters When compared with other helicopters of its time, the FL-282 Colibri stands out for its advanced design and operational capabilities. The Sikorsky R-4, which was developed around the same time in the United States, was the world's first mass-produced helicopter, but it featured a more conventional single-rotor design with a tail rotor to counteract torque. The FL-282's intermeshing rotor system offered a different approach to solving the stability issues inherent in early helicopter designs. In terms of performance, the FL-282 was comparable to other early helicopters, with a similar range and speed. However, its ability to operate from ships and its use in active combat roles set it apart from many of its contemporaries, which were often limited to training and experimental roles. Influence on Modern Helicopter Design The legacy of the FL-282 Colibri can be seen in several aspects of modern helicopter design. The intermeshing rotor system, while not widely adopted, has continued to be used in certain specialized helicopter designs, such as the Kaman K-Max, which is used for heavy lift operations. The success of the FL-282 in naval operations also helped pave the way for the widespread use of helicopters in maritime roles, including anti-submarine warfare, search and rescue, and shipboard reconnaissance. The FL-282's operational history also demonstrated the value of helicopters in military applications, contributing to the rapid development and deployment of rotary wing aircraft in the post-war era. Today, helicopters are an essential component of military forces around the world, used in a wide range of roles that were first explored with aircraft like the FL-282. Conclusion The Flettner FL-282 Colibri was a groundbreaking aircraft that played a crucial role in the early development of helicopter technology. As one of the first helicopters to be used operationally in warfare, the Colibri demonstrated the potential of rotary wing aircraft for military use and helped to shape the future of aviation. Despite the challenges and limitations it faced, the FL-282 was a successful design that influenced the development of post-war helicopters in both the United States and the Soviet Union. Its innovative intermeshing rotor system and its operational use in naval reconnaissance and artillery spotting missions were significant achievements that contributed to the advancement of helicopter technology. The FL-282 Colibri's place in aviation history is secure as a pioneering helicopter that helped to establish the helicopter as a vital tool for modern military operations. Its legacy continues to be felt in the design and use of helicopters today making it a key milestone in the history of aviation.